that building season he was in, every conversation, almost every conversation that came up, he'd pull out his wallet and then he'd pull out that picture and he'd talk about this, this boat that he was gonna get. Hey guys, I am super excited to introduce today's guest because on the ASCC stage is none other than one of my best friends, Nicole Rousseau. Nicole is not just a realtor. She's a top powerhouse at eXp Realty, shining bright in the Dallas Plano area, as well as Austin, and I'd say globally. She's a top influencer and growth leader at eXp Realty, making waves and setting trends. So let's all welcome my dear friend, yeah. Nicole Rousseau. Quite the introduction. Thank you, Bettina. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you're here. I'm excited that others are going to get to know you because I've had this opportunity and privilege to get to know you and call you my friend, like seriously, one of my dearest friends. So I'm so excited for this. I'm honored to be here. I really am. So I love you. Love your energy. Okay. I don't know. Maybe we don't start from the beginning, beginning, but let's start from, let's focus today on real estate. What got okay. you into real estate? What, how it has impacted your life and the lessons that you've learned on this journey that you may not have gotten if you weren't in this position. How I got into real estate, I was actually, I was kind of born into real estate for lack of a better way to say that. My parents both slung houses since I was a little girl. I mean, they um, had their own firm for a while and that was back in the early 90s. And, and then they joined Keller Williams back when nobody knew who Keller Williams was. And that was in 1994. And I was working um, my summers, not only uh, I was working some other random jobs, but I also worked the, the desk at the Keller Williams on Dallas Preston Road for while well, I was a little girl. And I remember doing the mailboxes. So I was just around it, you know, in the car, my mom on the phone, doing her deals, giving feedbacks on showings. I went with her to open houses. So I legitimately did grow up in it. And it was one of those things that I dug my heels in, like, I'm not going to be doing this. Like, I'm going to create my own path. Right. And so I went to college. I um, did that whole thing in Austin at UT. And then um, and then I actually was, was running tanning salons, believe it or not. I did that for quite a while. And I ran nine... I was a regional manager, ran nine salons. And then, and then I just decided, you know, I'm not going to be running tanning salons my whole life, even though it was fairly, you know, lucrative, it was decent money and everything like that. And I had a ton of fun. I had, a ton of, you know, responsibilities, autonomy. It was great for that time in my life, but I knew that entrepreneurial paths were, 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 were ahead of me somehow, some way. And of course my stepdad, Gene Frederick, you might know him if you're listening to this podcast, but he would always look at me and say, you know what, just get your license. If you work half as hard as you do there in real estate, you know, the sky's the limit. And I've always been a big, like, where can I go where the sky is the limit and the job position or the industry or the company is, is not the limit. Right. right? And so that in 2009, I finally said, okay, I guess my, my parents are, are smarter than I wanted to give them credit for. And I got my license. Um, but I was still working that corporate job. It took a minute, you know, it was like, I, I guess one part of your question was, what would you do different kind of, I think you might've said that, or what have you learned? And I would have gotten in a lot earlier looking back. Um, of course, that's easy to say at this stage, but at the time, um, again, I was just kind of rebelling. I wanted to do my own thing. And then getting getting into it, I, I couldn't let go of that salary paying job because as you know, as, as independent contractors in real estate, it's commission only. So it was just a hard transition for me to make 100%. But I started selling homes little by little in Austin on my mom's team. And that was a great place for me to start because I got to, to learn the ropes, learn what she did. I, I got to take advantage of the database that she had. And, and she's been in real estate since, uh, man, 
I mean, she had her, she got her license in the seventies. So forever. So I really got to learn from, I was blessed to be able to learn from the best of the best. And that's where I started selling, but I really could not ever, um, break that commission only threshold, right. That we all have to face. Right. right? And I've heard so much feedback when the more I visited with people about your mom, Susan, I have learned and heard so many amazing stories about how she mentored them and helped them in their business, how she'd come in and she just like, like gave them the confidence, not just the knowledge, but gave them a little nugget and then the confidence to take it and just run with it. And, and I think it's interesting. So you like, just like that, it was like, what was it about EXP? Because you were part-time really difficult to break away from that salary. But something at ESP broke, like spoke to you that you're like, I got this. Like you got that confidence. Yeah, it was definitely if for your listeners, um, if you know Gene Frederick, he it was two things. It was one of the things was Keller Williams nailed it when they created profit share in the beginning, and that was an opportunity for people to really build some type of wealth back then. Uh, in addition to their commissions. And both my mom and Jean did very well with that part of the model. And so when Jean showed us the EXP plan, particularly the revenue share piece, yes. I was like, this could be what profit share was in the 90s. This could be that next best thing. And, and look, it's a lot more lucrative. We're sharing off the top, it's revenue. So I knew Gene being kind of the pioneer if, of, of, of agent attraction and recruiting, like he was the leader in that space. I knew if I could follow him and get mentorship with that piece of it, that this was an opportunity that I needed to go all in on. So I just saw it as a, let me go all in and let me follow a leader like Gene yes. in, that, in that aspect. And then I think the second piece of, of, of answer is that I've seen Gene make things the things that he dreamed up or the things that he said would work come true enough in my life that I was like, well, if he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. happen. So, yes. Yeah, I like that so. boat, that picture of that, that little boat that he carried around in his wallet. Exactly right. When he puts it on paper, it happens. I've seen it like literally like dozens of times in our, in our, in my life. And that's just been a blessing because he's able to envision. He's kind of a visionary, but also, I've seen him go after something and I've seen him make it come true. And I've seen him go after it with like passion and, and just like obsession until it comes true. So yeah, of course. I, re I just true. remember like for during that season, that building season he was in every conversation, almost every conversation that came up, he'd pull out his wallet and then he'd pull out that picture or that pull it out. And he's like, and he talk about this this boat that he was going to get and how he was going to do it. He told everybody what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. That was so inspiring to see. And since then, like I know like if you ask Juan, he'll pull it's he has it in his phone like a little case. And I was like this is such a good reminder. I'm like what's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? That's a whose slogan is that? That's a slogan. Yeah. That's somebody's That's somebody's slogan. slogan. That's and I, I'm like that almost makes me want to put like, that needs to be our next thing is what's in your wallet. What are you making yep. happen? And who, are you, who right. are you telling the world about it? Because that's okay. Talk about accountability. We don't have, it's not just us two being an accountability partner, but he just made the whole world. Oh, I know he's not afraid to say it. He's not afraid to get it out there. Right. And that's part, I mean, like he's always asking where are your goals? He, he's like, here's mine. And he just pulls it out. Like, I'm like, whoa, like I better have them written down. I better have some type of direction. What am I dreaming about today? You know? So what's in your wallet? What's in my wallet? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, for me right now, it's 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 more experiences, more more trips. I wanna go back to I've been to Europe once, but I wanna I wanna travel over there. Like I wanna take a trip like you did with your Ava. Um to Southeast Asia, that would be so fun. So I have a lot of destinations that I want to go wow. to, but then, then I also have, I also have dreams about like, you know, I want to build our real estate portfolio and 
really make our start to make our money work for us. So I have visions around that. I love that. Um, those two things are the main things right now. So what's in your wallet? We're going to focus on that. Real estate. I know you've got some things going on in real estate right now. You're really taking it to your next level. Well, I'm trying, Bettina. That's the, the next game. See, as far as EXP is concerned, as you are well aware, we've we've been building the company. I've been try I've been focused on mostly revenue share for the past almost decade, believe it or not. And 2015 is when we came mm -hmm. here. And and what I'm realizing right now is that I want to get a little bit back into the production world and help agents that way. And that being a way that we can say, hey, it's not just it's not just wanting to be attractive as EXP Realty and as leaders within EXP Realty, but I think production is huge in, in, in saying, hey, here's what we have to partner yes. with. And here's the systems and tools we have in place. Come join us. And we want to kind of build around that. So that's where I'm shifting. Yeah. I think right now, too, one of the things that's happening in the real estate brokerage model space is lots of other people it was bound to happen sometime. Lots of other companies are now copying what EXP has brilliantly blazed forward. Yes. And, it, and so people are no longer saying, Oh, I'm joining the virtual model versus the older model. They're saying, which virtual model am I going to join? And there's very nominal differences. between yes. them. And so now I've, this is the, I don't know what you think about this. I feel like now it's going to be who am I joining? Mm -hmm. Not what company am I joining? It's all about the leaders that, that an agent wants to join because they're no longer picking the virtual model versus the older model. Yes. It's now like, I, I really think what's the differentiating, differentiating factor is going to be who you are as a leader. People are going to follow people. People are going to choose to partner with people. Yes. And I want to work on myself. My project has been working on myself. And part of that is how can I form a real estate sales team that people want to join? Because they're going to be choosing between joining my sales team and maybe somebody else's sales team, not necessarily EXP versus another brokerage, right? Yes, a little bit of that. And we've had a lot of conversations around this. And this is like, we're, we're on that same journey, right? I think the last year, I've really been working on our website, quantumbettina.com to provide all those resources. And you're building your team and we're doing it we're, we're wanting to provide that value in the space that we, uh, that brings us joy. So what are your favorite power ups that you like to share? Cause I have some that I like, I feel like I'm always like, I'm like, okay, this is your power up. This is your power up. Like oh, pretty consistent. It, it definitely depends on the agent, whether they're newer or not and just what their needs are. But um, like right now, EXP is doing that fast cap class, which I, I'm so I've gotten a ton of newer agents registered for that. Um, uh, so that would be one of them. Um, I always point agents to things like keeping current matters because it's so important to stay on top of the market. And that's one of my favorite resources for that. And they can have social media shareables and scripts on on things that they need to share with their client base. And things like that. So I love keeping current matters. KCM yes. people who, if you don't know what that is, look it up. Oh, right? it's amazing. If you don't um, listen to that, um, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now, but his monthly overview, mm -hmm. that thing is, I just want to say that's almost all you need. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So stay, yeah. staying up on, on that kind of data and, and information I think is, is critical. And so that, that would be one of the go-tos, power-ups. Mm -hmm. Different podcasts, Tim and Julie Harris have a really great one, which is a daily real estate coaching podcast um, that I think that if you listen to that, you, you really do get some practical, tactical tips on, on just how to make it in today's real estate market. They keep it super current and super applicable. So I love their podcast. That's just yeah. one. Uh, that I point them into the right direction on. Definitely all the classes in EXP world and the things that are going on there, I've always am pointing people to that. And whether it's like local events or local classes that are going on that are in person, I uh, keep abreast of that and say, hey, this would be great for you. This would be great for you. So those are just some of them. But I really like, I've 
I've really, and I do this for Gene Frederick's organization too. We really want to get people that join us and join the company. We really want to want them to understand what's available for them. And onboarding is critical in order. Otherwise, being a virtual broker, if you're not introduced to the tools and you don't know where to go, you could end up feeling a little bit lost. So I want to make sure that people know where to go. Yes. If it's a lot in the beginning and they don't know, then we're keeping up with them to understand what their needs are and somewhere down the line say, oh, remember, you have this available yes. to you, that available to you. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. And because I found that to be true, like, um, like they're like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, here, go here. Huh, here, go here. Because it is, it can be a lot. And I think just getting into the industry to start off with is a lot. And how do you, so one of my things is like sometimes folks feel like they need to do it themselves. Like, yeah. how do you help people understand that it takes a village, that it's not, you don't, you don't get bonus points for doing it by yourself. No. And I think that this industry, I mean, real estate school basically teaches you like the bare minimum of legal and contracts and stuff. It does not teach you how to build a business. It does not teach you situational stuff. It is that it is so like bare bones about what it is to actually succeed in this business that if all you go on is what you learned in real estate school, good luck. Yeah. Like you have to actually learn what it takes to build the business. And, and so I think that's why I love the EXP model because people are actually getting help by people that are financially incentivized to help them mm -hmm. win. So now instead of going into a brokerage where everybody's your competition, EXP created the way where it's in my best interest to help anybody that needs it in my organization. And same thing with you, like you've built an incredible, I was messing around on there yesterday, website with all the resources to help the people that you've brought in because you want to have that one-stop place where you can say, hey, here's our resources. It's an easy location. Here's where you can go. And here's what I've built out. Don't try to re, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Right. Here's all the help that you have. And you actually do it. no shame in anybody's game for getting help right. because there are people who have struggled before you. Why go through those same struggles and just understand that it is not just like, hey, I'm done. Here's my license. I'm ready to sell property. You actually have to learn, learn the business. And so mentorship and guidance and partnerships are so important. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, one of the common denominators that I see, and I was just I was just having this conversation this morning, is folks will they come in and then they say they're going to do A, B, or C. It doesn't matter how small or how big it is. So one of the... Um, indicators in my opinion is if they do what they say they're going to do right and then the other part that's part one if they just do what they say they're going to it doesn't even matter what it is but if they have a habit of doing what they say they're going to do what they commit to the other thing um i think the other habit i think i see that is also a leading indicator for success in my and this is just my opinion right from like what i've seen is when they um, when they seek advice and you offer something and they actually are excited about it versus saying, yeah, but. The ones mm -hmm. who say, yeah, but the most, like you can't, they're like, oh, I'm not comfortable. I did it enough. Like you can't keep doing what you've been doing and expect different results to get somewhere else. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I think those are the two yeah. things. What have you found? Yeah, that's exactly right. I think it's like if somebody raises their hand and say, yes, I want to succeed in this business, then are you showing up to our meetings? Right. Are you or aren't you right? Are you doing the whatever it is that we've agreed that is going to get you to that next level, whether that's all prospecting time, whether that's open houses, there's lots of different things, as you know, that right. somebody could choose to spend their time on depending on who they are, how much money they have, what their personality yes. is, what, they, what they're interested in, who they hang out with, that kind of right. thing. Let's identify those things, but then are you actually doing those things? If, if, if you have a roadmap, are you willing to follow the are roadmap? You if you're not, you like doing? I think like, with, yeah, if, if there's no action behind there, then yeah. 
I, who can help right. you? You know, you have to help right. yourself. Get so I think, yeah. I mean, it's a willingness to actually do the work. There's something about this industry, I believe, that we're made up of the successful people are givers. Historically, tell me this isn't true. People were a little bit competitive, right? And they just kind of in as an industry. But in the right environment, they just become these big-hearted givers. Yeah. And I think EXP makes I, that environment. 100%. Oh, my gosh. Especially because with technology and the cloud that EXP is, the fact that one company, you're, you're not just talking about the person that's competing for the same listings you are. You're talking and partnering with people that have no stake in whether or not you get that, that listing other than they're, we own the company together. So I want you to succeed. So then you, that fosters the financial alignment, yes. which is key to everything because we're all motivated here financially. I don't care what anybody says, but then you say, okay, wait, I can freely give. Yes. Everybody benefits as a result of that. And it's not hurting me. It's helping me. And it helps it everybody. everybody yes. right? And it's kind of like, Brittany, you, Daniel, I'm just going to, because we're on this, on a project together, right? Um, Tina, none of us directly financially benefit from working together. Like we're not in the same organization. That's correct. Yeah. At the same time, we all are financially benefiting because we're providing something for the whole, right? And yep. it's that collaboration, which I'm so incredibly proud of. So on the huddle this morning, it was, um, one of them has said, we were talking about the top every day is something different, but today it was like, what is that one thing that you think is keeping you stuck? And this agent, he, he was so, I love that we've been able to build this relationship. He said, excuses, excuses. So I went on Gemini, right? Or chat GPT and Gemini went to BFS and was like, how do you stop making excuses? Step one was being aware, essentially, just when you make an excuse, like, to, like I'm going to guess this agent had an excuse. She, she just needed to be aware that she was making an excuse. And then the next step, and I say it differently than Gemini's better, but I'm like, take back the power. So what was your responsibility in that? Did she make the calls? Like, what is your responsibility? Right. And, and then the other one was um, like, like making the steps, right? Like what is, like taking action, what is your part? How can you, like, what could you do about it, right? Yeah. What, which part is in your control and what part's not in control and what can you do about the part that you're in control? And, you know, and then it goes on smart goals and things like that. But I was just kind of like, yeah. Because we all, like, so often people have, it's that yeah, but. That's, all, that's always it is figure out, like, Stop looking at that. Look at like, okay, here's reality. What can I do mm -hmm. to change it? And then focus on those things. Do the things that you can do to make the change in the right direction. Focus That's on the solution, not the problem. Yes. yes. And I love that. And, and I love that we do that. We're really good. And I think that's the reason I love you so much is because I do feel like we're very solutions oriented. And I was actually telling Juan about like, how much I appreciate our friendship, like yours and Brittany's. Um, and it's just, I said, I have, I love how focused they are on, on the solution, on not passing blame of just believing and having faith in themselves and recognizing, yeah, it's not easy. It does take hard work. And you guys are so consistent in showing up that way every single time. And I love that you guys also aren't like, yeah, everything's perfect. No, there's problems. Sometimes things are hard. And then you give yourself like a split second on that. 
and then we're moving on to solutions. Yes. And I love you guys both for that exact same reason. Like I just, I'm thankful that somehow, some way we came together at the time that we did and, uh, and we've been able to kind of feed off of one another in a positive yeah. way. You know, sometimes I've, I've felt in my life that sometimes like leadership can sometimes be a lonely mm -hmm. place. And, and, um, and what, I, what I mean by that is like when I was at the tan, tanning salons, I was the regional manager, but every, like I was in charge, mm -hmm. kind of in charge. I had a bunch of people in, in my organization. And, and so in that way, when it was hard, I, I wasn't going to go to somebody that was working for me and, and yes. talk about how hard right. it was like, it's, it's, like I got to figure it out. I'm the right. leader. Right. And so in that way, I just have always felt to myself, sometimes it's lonely as a leader. And it's so great to have found other leaders to connect with that are experiencing the same, like like-mindedness, the same type of things that's going on in their lives and their world. And they're the same type of mentality of solutions. Yes. What's the solutions? So I think that goes and speaks to also just like who you associate yourself with, who you want to surround yourself with really does matter right. you know and i'm grateful that we that we've we've kind of found each other at the times that we found each other yeah. so it's really it's enhanced me my too. my life experience yeah like, me too i agree and it's funny because we are different right we're all we are all so yeah. different but our mindsets are the same and i love that and i think that that is a message that i think everybody should really t go go with is like you find your people, you're not stuck. If you don't love your, if like the where you're at in your life right now, right? And the people that you're around aren't of the mindset, right? We're out there looking for you. <laughs> There's somebody yeah. looking for you. Like, please raise your hand. For sure. I think sometimes we kind of get at a certain stage in our lives, like, where we feel like it might be harder to make connections with others because we're no longer like in like the, the young professional kind of community and we have kids and we have families and all this right. stuff. Right. Not to say we're old cause we're not old, but, um, but as you go on in life, it's just refreshing to know, Hey, I still have the ability to make a friend or yes. a connection or, you know Absolutely. what I mean? I love that. I do too. What have we not visited about? What is one nugget? Here's what I would say in a world full of messages that, that want to kind of discourage you and changes and media stuff and all that stuff. That's not where the good stuff's at. Try to block that out and understand that we're all here for human connection. We all go through stuff. We can, we can all relate to hardships, mm -hmm. right? People sometimes tend to look at somebody else and think that their situation is just leaps and bounds different. And that's why they're able to achieve certain things or have certain things or succeed in certain ways. But the reality is that's not the case. I can guarantee you, we all have our things. And so find people that you can kind of connect with in order to say, oh, you understand my things? It might not be exactly what you're going through, but you have things and and we can help each other kind of overcome and get to the next thing. I think being vulnerable in that regard. Last thing to say, yeah. let's just say it, is it still recording? We have the build event coming up. So I don't, I know this podcast might live on and it's evergreen, but if you hear this before July 25th and 26th of 2024, then please go to the website that you'll see scrolling across the bottom of here and, and, and register because we have people coming in to talk about not only what's going on in today's market and how to be successful as an agent with different forms of social media and content and just all the changes that are going on, but we have rev share speakers and it's a not, it's a don't miss opportunity to come and learn from the best. So please come. Yes. And if you've missed that one, we're going to, we continue these every year there. We have the rallies, we have the XP Hon, where we do events where we bring in speakers to help one and help our real estate communities. And it really happens nationwide. Um, and yep. actually, I guess I need to say worldwide because there was just an event in Portugal. Worldwide. worldwide. I was like, I have a station. Oh, what? Correction. 
So absolutely. Well, there's a website, buildevent24.com. I'm going to assume next year it'll be buildevent25.com, 26, and so on and so forth. There we go. Well, I appreciate you. I love you. Love you. 